Hey babes, welcome to Stoned and Horny, the podcast all about exploring and expanding your knowledge in sex and cannabis with experts and friends. I'm your host, Haley Herms, and today we're talking about sexual harassment, slut shaming, cannabis and depression, and plants first pills with our special guest, Kendra Sunderland. Did I say that right? Yes. Sunderland. <laughs> so we're just going to dive right into it. Jeez. So first and foremost, if you guys don't know, Kendra is like one of the most like like famous porn stars around and is Thank is you. that okay if I say porn star or is yes, there another of course. okay yes cuz it's it's I true she's a star <laughs> like you cannot go to any like porn page and she's like mm. on the front page you've seen her your girlfriend your boyfriend your mom <laughs> your grandma everyone has seen her she is truly like the star of the star of the industry right now in the past few years Aww. definitely so i'm so excited <laughs> to have you on here but mm. with having such like a heavy title of being such like a queen of of your industry, Aww. I'm sure it comes with a lot of challenges. Of and course. I know a lot of times people, especially with like TikTok now, they try to glamorize the industry and everything mm -hmm. like that. But I feel like we don't talk about enough that you can do sex work, adult entertainment work, whatever it is, and still have boundaries just like quote mm -hmm. unquote normal people and still yeah. get those things pushed. And just because you do porn doesn't mean you want to fuck every person you see on the street. Mm -hmm. So I want to, I want to be like, okay, let's get inside your mind. Let's mm -hmm. talk about the boundaries and other things and how you really deal with that because you're a strong woman and mm -hmm. I love Thank that you. you're so outspoken. And if you follow her and if you don't follow her, we'll talk about where you can find her on everything later. Mm -hmm. But she is very you speak up about things that bother you. And yes. I like that <laughs> because you do have such a male dominated, um, crowd that it's important for someone to tell these men, this is not okay. Yeah. And it's not your job by any means, but I love that you do share that. So mm -hmm. I, I want to kind of dive deep in. I feel like a lot of women, especially we not only it's like guaranteed you're going to experience sexual harassment and slut shaming, <laughs> but when do you remember like the first like memory or like the youngest age you were when you first got sexually harassed? Um, I just think in high school, I kind of like grew titties, if I could say that. Yeah, you can say titties. <laughs> you can swear, you can say, yeah, you're okay, good. I should ask, but yeah, I, I grew um, just like big boobs and I just remember like that was the thing, like everyone thought that that's, you know, why people would talk to me or like... I just got too much attention. All my friends, like, they would have me <laughs> flash people because I was the only one with big titties. Yeah. So we were just kids, like, running around just being funny. But I don't know. I feel like around that time, I kind of was getting, like, not necessarily super harassed, but it was, a, like, a topic of conversation. Like, I felt like that's all that really people noticed or cared about. When it and came you to felt me, that at like a young age, you had noticed yeah, that. Yeah, like 15 or 16, I kind of wow. noticed how boys <laughs> are and that they're very simple minded and they just see boobs and they're like, duh, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and I just, I just remember being like, okay, I kind of understand that this is, you know, how the world works and this is, you know, I could get uh, maybe things out of it. And um, I just had this one teacher who never did anything while I was a student, but there was things later on I realized that were kind of like inappropriate. Could you share for that? a teacher to do? Yeah, he um, he told like he everyone said that he would like stand over my desk and like s s choose to speak to the class there, but he was like looking down my shirt. And I always thought that, that was, I was like, yeah, you guys are so dumb. Like not everyone just yeah. like looks at titties, but it was true. And he had wrote me poems and <gasps> stuff in his computer that they later found. And he described me as the perfect woman, which he wasn't wrong. I'm <laughs> just kidding. But he I really mean. was like, I just feel like you're, you're the perfect woman and you're going to grow into be such a beautiful, smart, kind woman. And I always thought that was kind. And then later on, I realized that's not okay for your teacher to he wrote, be like so that. So he wrote those while you were still in high school. I believe so. I think that there was years of letters and poems and I wasn't the only <gasps> girl. Um, I think it was How somebody else. How did they else. find them? Someone else complained and they searched his computer because it's a <gasps> school computer and found... 
poems about us. Uh, oh, and so is he in jail now? <clears throat> no. Um, oh, he never not. did anything to anyone um, that was, you know, he never did anything, acted on any of it. Um, he only told me his feelings for me after I graduated. So when they came to me, I was in college and I was just like, yeah, you know, like he never did anything while I was in school. But later on outside of school, like, yes, he told me he loved me and that. Wow. Yeah, he wrote me this letter because I had blocked him. I just felt uncomfortable with him Snapchatting me and like all this stuff. And I just felt weird about it because he's like married with kids. And so I had blocked him and he went to my parents' house. He went to <gasps> my, cause my brother was a student of his and my best friend's sister. So he knew their addresses that was in the system. So he went <gasps> to my house and my dad was like, yo, what are you doing here? He's like, oh, I just thought Kendra needed help in college, blah, blah, blah. And then so he went to my- He just dad. randomly dropped by. Yeah, my parents' house. And I've seen your stories. Your dad looks pretty kick-ass. My dad's a big guy. Like, okay. Yeah, like, I, he's intimidating for sure. So I, um, he, did, he brought the letter to my friend's parents' house and gave it to her younger sister who was in our friend group, and she gave it to me. And he confessed his love for me. And at the end, he said- if there's anything you shall need, there's little that I wouldn't do for you. And it's kind of creepy, but... <laughs> wow. Yeah, so I've, I've known from, like, 15 or 16, kind of just the way that sexuality and the way that it works. So I've always been very open. I think my friends were always kind of, like, amazed at how open what I was mm -hmm. and how, like... I wanted to experience new things. I was trying to get tag teamed at like 18 for my boy, for my boyfriend and like his friends and stuff. And they were just kind of like, I've always been a very sexual person. Okay. So I feel like I was born for porn is what I say. Oh, cute. I just feel like I was meant to be where I am right now. So did you, so you knew from a young age you wanted to do it or is it something like you got older and it, it just kind of like you got into the industry? I didn't really know much about the industry until I went to college and I spent, like, my first freshman year, like, partying in the dorms, like, going to frats. I had, like, an amazing first year. And then the second year, I was trying to find a job, and nobody would hire me in my college town. Oh, no. So, yeah, so I was tired of being broke. So my friend just suggested webcamming that he had friends that um, made a lot of money on it and that he thought I would, you know, do really great and just suggested it. And so... I asked my boyfriend at the time, and he said no, and I did it anyways, and I think it was like only my second or third day of, um, excuse me, webcamming that I went to the library and made the library video that I'm known for, um, but it was a webcam show, so someone recorded it and then later put it out, so I think even then, I didn't really know the extent of where I could get in this industry. I mm -hmm. just wanted to travel and I knew that I could travel with this job and get paid to travel and like take pictures in really beautiful places and sell those. Like I kind of knew that I could make a career out of this. So when the library thing happened, I just went with it and just took the opportunities that came to me. I love that. And yeah. so if, you, if you're listening and you don't know, Kendra is super, super famous <laughs> for a library video with her titties and some other, you know, teasing. Some, yeah, some teasing. And it went super viral, super fast. Yeah. And it was like heard around the world. And you probably know who she is and you don't even realize it. <laughs> you probably heard that story. A lot of people are like, oh, you're that girl. Like, yeah, yes, that's me. That was me. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I didn't put the connection together till I saw her Instagram name and yeah. it made sense to me. And I was like, oh my God, but it was so iconic. Mm -hmm. And then I saw recently you posted this beautiful post. You looked gorgeous. You were Thank in St. Lucia, I believe. Yes. And I loved it. It was so empowering because your message was the guy who leaked the video of you on your private camera. Like mm -hmm. obviously when you cam, you're not like 
kind of like OnlyFans. I feel like you're not supposed to be sharing that content. It's not yeah. supposed to be leaked. And so, but your your comment to him was so much like, I hope you're as happy as I am today. I know he ain't. Yeah. I know he ain't happy. He, and I just thought that was so <laughs> powerful because he did something that could have like ended you and like, yeah. but you took that as a stepping stone and built your career. And now you have so many wonderful opportunities yeah. and a whole life for yourself. And you've, you've reclaimed it and taken the power back from that whole situation situation yeah. especially because you were so young it's yeah. like such a vulnerable place to be and not everybody that young who does sex work wants to be have that kind of att attention yeah some of them just want to stay closeted and like want no one to find out yeah so if can i ask you did were you what where are you from i'm from salem oregon Ooh! It's not where the witches happen. That's Salem, okay. Massachusetts. It's Thanks just, for saying that. It's just the capital of Oregon. It's okay. no big deal. Okay. And so when that happened, was were you still living in your hometown? I was in Corvallis, which was the college town. It's like half an hour maybe from Salem. But in all of Oregon, it was a story. My grandparents saw me on the news um, that, you know, had no idea what was going on. My parents knew I was webcamming, so they were... Um, they had gotten over it and they were cool with me and, you know, checking in, checking in on me, thankfully, but, um, it was, it made it around the whole state. I had like ex-boyfriends, parents see it and like professors. It's the college that blew it up so much. I think that if it was any other library, it might not have happened so much, but it mm -hmm. was the college because all the students were talking about it all the professors, everybody was talking about it and just gathered so much attention on the media that then it went to other states. Like people told me they saw me in the newspaper in like Mexico and like other like countries and stuff. So do you think the college was crazy. exploiting you to get attention for like admissions or anything like that? I think that they tried to create an example of me. They charged me with public indecency. Oh, fuck. Yeah, which I, I was kicked out of the school, but I technically wasn't enrolled because okay. I was like, I'm not paying to go to the school where I don't see a future with for myself. Like, I'd rather just do this. Yeah. So I dropped out, and that's when that happened. But I'm not allowed on campus grounds. They took my picture, and I paid a $1,000 fine. And I think it's off my record now because it's been so long. But okay. they, I think they tried to make an example of me. But I just – I feel like out of everything that happens on a college campus, what I did was very minimal. Yeah. So And I think, I think a lot of things – that we we think about oh a lot of people especially like middle america people they're thinking about you specifically but no one's thinking about again like you said like you wanted to travel the world you wanted to do this and why we live in a country where it's so hard economically right now yeah. to try to not even like get ahead but even keep up and just like live month by month is so hard. Yeah. So I think it's important to note that like anyone who ever like shames you for anything you do is just like someone you don't want to have in your life. Unless you're hurting others, um, your career, your choice, period. So were you getting mm -hmm. slut shamed by anybody oh, in the town? What was like some of the, like the things that they were like um, trying to say? Before I became library girl, I was – kind of exploring posting myself more nude as time went on. And I remember I had posted myself in a bikini, like just a bathing suit. And all these girls started hating on me. So my sister texted me. I remember she was like, why are they hating on you? And I was like, I don't know. I, get, I don't know what's wrong, but... Um, I just, they want to be you yeah. and their boyfriends want to do you. It was so bad. I was like, looking back at it now, I'm like, y'all are sad because that was literally a bikini and I was just getting started. And then I remember I rejected this guy and he got somebody to a girl to flirt with me and ask for pictures. And so I sent them to her. I was like exploring my sexuality then. And he took them and he posted them. Or, like, sent them out, and people were calling me pepperoni nipples. And back then, I did feel like my nipples were bigger, but webcamming helped me to realize that I, like, there's so many people out there. I might not be everyone's cup of tea, but there's, like, billions of people in this world. Like, there's going to be people out there that like you for you. Yeah. And webcamming really, really helped me to realize that because people were on there complimenting my nipples, saying they loved it, and, like, 
um, that I realized they're proportionate to my boobs. Like, don't try me. And regardless, like everyone's beautiful in their own way. There's yeah. always someone out there for somebody. And I just, I remember webcamming gave me the confidence to be like, fuck all of you guys. Like, I love my body. I actually took a picture with pepperoni pizza slices oh my over God. my boobs. And I was like, this is what I picture when you say pepperoni nipples. So I kind of, like, tried to... What's your sign? You're hilarious. I'm a Gemini. <laughs> yes! I have a Gemini rising. Yes. So I get it. I You're love fucking to, hilarious. I love to just put people in their place and, like, say all this shit. So I definitely, I took the reins. And I think that that's what gave me the confidence to tell people, like... No, I'm webcamming now. I'm making like three grand every two weeks just sitting at my house, like talking to people on my computer. And some people just want to talk. Like not everyone wants you to do nasty shit. Like, yes, it was just it was very eye opening to me at the possibilities uh, that I could run with in this industry. And I think it's a lot wider and broader than people expect. A lot of people said my life was over then. Mm -hmm. and I think I said in that caption you were talking about, like my life really had just begun Yes, at that point. So <laughs> yes, girl, we love to hear that. Yeah. So then as you, as you got more into the industry, you got out of your small town because that, especially in LA here, I feel like mm. it's like a soup of really hot girls from yeah. small towns that girls <laughs> were just so jealous. It's like we got ran out of our towns to go Basically. somewhere where we could all meet each other and be hot friends together. Yeah. So love that for us. Um, <laughs> but so in saying that now that you're like full, like you're a star porn star and everything, what's it, is there any like sexual harassment or like slut shaming like when you try to date or like how how's the the yeah. dating scene like like how do you like do you just automatically tell someone your boundaries when you're trying to date or talk about like especially you know you have like polyamorous couples or things like that where they they have rules and they've navigated mm. have you like navigated it like that yet or are you still just like learning as you go um, I'm learning as I go. I had a relationship that was an open relationship for a while, but I just felt it was very unfair and not for me. I think I've kind of accepted as long as I do porn, the pool of people that would be comfortable dating me and love me the way that I believe I want to be loved is you deserve very, it. very small group okay. of people that can understand that porn is just work like these people I work with even if we're friends we're just friends mm -hmm. like I've tried to date someone in the industry and it just didn't work out so I just it takes a special someone to understand that I'm just going getting the check getting paid and leaving and that's all it is to me but I feel like the connection that I could build with someone on a deeper level that took the time to get to know me as a person would be so much more than anything any connection porn could be so mm -hmm. it takes it's very hard for anyone to kind of be okay with that let alone even like a lot of people just think those type of guys don't exist mm -hmm. and I know they do but at this point I kind of feel like I'm better off by myself okay I feel like I've met so many people and like when it happens it'll happen like you're happen. still open to love yeah I I'm love always open to love I'm a hopeless romantic same you know I I have I get on someone that I like and I just I'm obsessive like I have a very obsessive personality I recently discovered candles that look like food okay I love those you I'm, it like I'm obsessed it's yes. bad what's the brand name Okay, so I, I like end of summer candles, okay. EOS candles. I found them, and there's this one um, that's like an acai bowl, and I swear to God, it looks exactly like an acai bowl, but, and it smells so good. And how does it melt? They just melt. It's so cool because, like, it just slowly melts, like, all the fruits or, like, whatever food is on the top. It looks like real food, but it's not. Mm -hmm. And it just slowly I saw melts the fruit it. Loops, one that you had. Yes. And I was like, uh, and do you, like, stir them and stuff? Yeah. Once it melts and you can get the spoon out, like, do I they smell good? Yes. Okay. All of them smell good, especially, like, the ones that I found later on are just so much more advanced that they just smell so good so I'm just very obsessive when I find something I like like I just I want to go after it like I love it I think about it all the time and it's very similar with boys okay it's always been like that since I was 15 I've been like actually since I was in fifth grade I've always had boyfriends 
this is the longest I've ever been single now that I do porn. Okay. So my whole life, I've always had boyfriends all the time. And now it's just kind of like, it's a little harder to find and it's okay. It's just, okay. It's all right. I feel like the more established I make myself, the more established of a person I'll find one day. So yeah, exactly. You'll, it's you'll right. date on your level Yes. and the comfortability and like, it takes a really secure man. Yeah. And I think you're, I think you'll find that I've seen so yeah. many like people that we know in the industry, beautiful relationships. So I think, yeah. and I, I, one of my like cheesy phrases, and I think you'll appreciate it because you're a hopeless romantic, like you <laughs> said, is like, if you could love the wrong person so much, imagine how much you'll love the right person. Yes. So I really do love that. Yes. With that said, before we change gears, I did want to read some of the, the viewers of, I did ask them, how young were you when you like your first memory of being sexually harassed? Mm -hmm. And the answers were sad, but I am still not surprised. And so we, I'm just going to like read the ages. Here we go. Seven, eight, nine, four, seven, eight, five, nine, 10, 12, 16, eight, 10, eight, nine, 11, 15, six, 17. So unfortunately so the sad. majority age when I added up and calculated everything children. was about eight or nine it's years so old. Disturbing. It's so disturbing. And I'm so glad you were able to speak up about your professor and say something. Mm -hmm. And like, he's been, obviously I'm assuming he does not work at no. the school district <laughs> no. anymore. So, but I think it's so important. So on saying that, it, do you have any advice to girls, whether they're in porn or not, but like setting boundaries and just like when it comes to slut shaming and sexual harassment, like what do you have to, how can you empower the girls? What do you have to say to them? Or um, Honestly, after that list of how young these people are, I really feel like it's the parents' job. I, my own parents, um, I feel like a lot of them, are very uncomfortable talking about sex with their yes. children yes. and they don't know when to start. But that list is just proof. Like you might not think your, your child's thinking about sex at eight years old, but there's some other person that is, and will like, it's very obvious. Yes. We all know that that happens. And yeah. so I think it's very important for parents to talk to their kids about their boundaries like you know if yes. anything happens where you're uncomfortable like you can talk to us you can tell us and I just think open communication with your children is very important because you have to protect these kids like there's so many sick people out there that mm -hmm. it scares me even my little brother is 15 now and I'm still terrified every day of bad things happening to him like school shootings yep. getting bullied for because of me anything I worry about him oh, wow. so Oh, yeah, kids. Bullied? Well, yeah, kids are. You I know, think he's he'd be more like, cool, like to be like. But it's it's not. I think around 18, 17, 18, the the boys start to think it's cool. But at fifteen, they just they you know they'll dog on you for anything, and yeah. it's just silly, stupid boys. So I just feel like he'll grow out of it. Yeah, and I try and just teach him. You know that I'm happy in my life. I've yes. chose this, and I think that the love that my family gives me is the most important thing. Like. And the love that I give back to you, like, tell these these kids, like, F you, like, my sister's cool. Like, I'll bring him down to visit me and take him shopping and stuff. I try and show him that, you know, there's a lot of positives to this life. And even though society tries to paint it as all negatives, mm -hmm. I believe that it's, like, been a huge positive thing in my life. So yes, I just want to like destigmatize that because yeah. even today people comment and try and shame me and say like, your parents must be so proud. But like my parents do tell me they're proud of me yeah. quite often, which is hilarious that they say that. Cause I'm like, you're right. Like they are proud of me. Shout out to Kendra's parents. <laughs> I yes, love that. I love them. You're a great, you're a great example of like porn star doing it right and yeah. speaking for women and still like it's it's a hard place to be in there's a lot of pressure mm -hmm. and so yeah I think and society likes to just believe the bad in everything I think that there's a few former porn stars who have gone on to talk about their negative experiences in the industry without allowing to explain that it also got them to where they are very very successful people yes and very successful in other forms they've gone on to do other things but some people just have a habit of talking about the negative and it's unfortunate that 
society and the internet listens to them. They don't listen to me and other happy performers that say they we love the to. job. We love it's, what we do and our, our boundaries are respected. We have great times at work and like people just don't want to believe that. Yeah. It's I, weird. It is weird because pe it's, it's kind of like what you said earlier. People want to make an example out of you yeah. and it mostly has to, I think, it goes back to like America and what we're instilling in the culture and trying to, you know, sell, 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 buy, buy, yeah. buy. So, it, you know, there's there's positive and negatives to ev everything. And I don't think that should just be mutually ex exclusive to porn. And just, you know, I've heard guys try to talk down on strippers and be like, oh, if you're a stripper, you must be sad. You must yeah. be desperate. You must this. You must have no family. But when in reality, there are so many beautiful porn stars, sex workers, strippers, that are living these beautiful lives with their beautiful families. And if mm -hmm. they didn't come from one, they created one. Yeah. And I think that's so important. And to be honest, uh, as, as a model and an influencer in a bunch of different industries, whether it's cannabis, sex, whatever, I've come to find the sex work community is probably the nicest, yeah. most accepting <laughs> next to the stoners. The yeah. sex workers and the stoners are like the nicest, best people like you could ever work with. Yeah. So I definitely, I'm so happy you're here to stick destigmatizing that yes. and you're, you're the proof of the pudding. Yes. So we're going to kind of <laughs> switch gears. We, we talked about the horny portion now today, right? <laughs> but the cannabis portion. So you're a stoner. Yes. You're I a stoner. have this tattoo. Like weed is in my veins. Yes. It's, I love it. I've always loved weed. And if you can't see it right now, you can go to our YouTube channel and see the tattoo that she has. It's a cool like. Uh, yes. Sorry. No, you're, no, you're fine. <laughs> it is like, it's, it's right where they take my blood in the inside of my arm. And it's like a, a heartbeat, but then it goes into a pot leaf. It's so back dope. Back into the heartbeat. So what do the nurses there. say when they take your blood? I just laugh and I'm like, yeah, it's a good thing. Like TH C doesn't affect the tests or anything because yeah. like, there's like my veins. blood in my veins when at all times. Oh yeah, I, no, same. They're always yeah. like your cannabis levels are really high. I'm like, yeah, they're yeah. always going to be really high. Yeah. But when did you start using cannabis? Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Yeah, I was introduced to it by some friends, and I just I remember not liking it at first. I thought it was weird. I kind of was like, I thought I was at Walmart. Like I had this. <laughs> this flash of me being at Walmart and oh. I was like, yo, that's weird. And then I just feel like the more that I did it, the Where more I you? liked it. My friends like, parents garage or something. Okay, they had, he had like a garage room. Yeah. Where we used to get away with everything, but yeah, I just tried it. And I think I just, I liked it ever since the beginning. I feel like people either they find what they like and they stick to that, whether it's drinking, smoking or whatever. But I feel like everyone has their, their thing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like, what's your favorite form of consuming cannabis? I love Jeter's. I say that all the time. There are these pre-rolls. Yes. You're the Jeter queen. I am. I don't want to, you know, I hate to be like, I started that trend, but I really did. Like I put Kirill um, from Assholes Live Forever onto Jeter's and then people will tell him like, yo, you put me on Jeter's. And he's like, what can you put me on? And I wish I could remember my first Jeter. I really don't. I've smoked so many of them, but I love them. They're they're a great company. They're dipped in oil and keef, the ones that I get. And they have so many flavors, like peach rings, mango sherbet's my new so favorite. Good. They're just so fruity that now I, I can't smoke regular joints. Like, I'll smoke any type of weed. Like, I don't care the form. I love that it all. Yeah. But if I had to choose, it would be a really fruity joint or like a really fruity dab really yes. terpy i love like, it ugh. i'm a fruity girl too yes what do you use cannabis for uh to uh, like at first you just life. started it was fun as like a kid yeah and then as you were older did you use it for any like um like i guess medicinal purposes i just feel like it keeps me calm collected kind like, um, open-minded, but then again, it kind of helps me not to care about the little things. Mm -hmm. It kind of just, I don't know, it's become a part of my life now that I just don't, I don't really see myself without it. Like, I don't know. I've stopped for like a month before because I had to, but, um, for surgery, not for any criminal offenses, but, <laughs> but I, I just love it. I just feel like, I don't know. I think if a lot of people smoke more weed, like people would be more chill. Yeah. Like oh, definitely. people get so wound up and so upset 
over things that they can't control that I feel like it kind of just helps kind of mellow you out and just not really care about the little things and and find the beauty in things is it hard to travel with with like okay no, I personally I am a, I am an international weed smuggler like okay. I have traveled out of the country so many times and I always bring jeters with me or weed and I've only been in trouble twice where was it LAX actually oh. I was trying to fly out before it was like a month before they made it legal to fly out with oh. weed and I just had so many different types of weed products on me that they thought I was traveling with intent to sell yeah and I was like I'm just gonna be gone for two weeks I'm a heavy stoner and I like variety and so I got that dropped but it was always like on my record so I came back from Jamaica and flew through Texas one time and they flagged me and this guy was like searching my bag like I was a terrorist with a bomb or something like he was pulling my pant legs apart like my dirty underwear piece by piece everything and he found edibles that were in a Ziploc bag just like little brownie bites in a bag and I was like yeah these are my snacks and he's like brownies and I was like yeah <laughs> and he's like they don't smell like regular brownies and I was like okay like you, you act like you caught El Chapo. Yeah, I was yeah. like, they were testing my actual candy. And I was like, just so you guys know, like, that's literally just candy. Like, at this point, I'll tell you whatever you want to know. And they were like, well, you never know these days. They make it look like the actual candy and tested everything. And, oh, God. and I had one joint and they just, they tried to charge me. And I was like, I feel like you guys are being Shut very up. dramatic. Like, I'm not enough. I'm not a violent criminal. I'm literally just someone traveling with edibles in a joint, like, and they let me go with a diversion. Um, and that's, What's the diversion? Um, I think I was supposed to go back and take a class. But I signed up for it and then COVID happened. So all the oh. classes got canceled and I don't really know where I stand with that. Yeah. But I've traveled outside of the country plenty of times. And in my experience, it's America that is the strictest. Like, I will never bring anything back with me. I, I always have no problem at other airports um, but I don't want to speak for everyone because I know yes, some people will probably get randomly experience. checked. This is just me. Yes. But it, yeah, I've never gotten in trouble. And I have my medical card. So if anything did happen, I would try and play that. Like, you know, it's my medicine. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like, you could take it, throw it away. Like, I didn't mean, you know. We had the but I've never had that happen, thankfully, in that's another good. country because that's really scary. That's what I'm, like, most scared about because yeah. I, like, I, too, want to, like, travel the world. And I've been to a couple other countries, but I'm scared if I get to another country like obviously yeah. we've seen everything like in Russia there's that basketball yeah. player unfortunately especially because she's a woman of color yeah some countries I just especially Russia I would not oh yeah I'll go sober I, I would not I'll risk it Russia but yeah I'm, I don't think I'll go there I'm but good if I there. did but yeah, yeah exactly I just put it in my check bag and normally I'm okay yeah. anything anything more than that that I'm a little more afraid to take I put in my bra because we have oh, such really? big boobs like I've put in things right on the nipple and it's lit up on the screen, but they can't touch over your nipples, so they go around and under. And I had previously put it under, and I was like, that's not a good idea. So I put it right there, and they didn't get caught. So I think if you're really, really scared, put it in your bra or if you're a guy in your underwear because they can't just strip search you for no reason. Yeah. Like, they can't just be like, show me inside your shirt or yeah. something, you know? So in my experience, like, that's another good way okay i love that hypothetically <laughs> hypothetically warning warning if you were going these to. are personal things we've tried <laughs> stoned and horny and kendra are not responsible yeah. if you try these you're you're trying these tips at your own at risk, your own risk. <laughs> yes okay um so in saying that I mean, cannabis helps for so many things. And mm -hmm. I, I love like what you said. It brings you down. It calms you. It centers you. It takes away from the things that like, you know, we could obviously get really worked up about, but yeah. then, you know, you don't. And so I've also seen your, again, you're so open. And that's yes. a, another reason why like I've invited you onto the show because I think women really need to hear the things you've experienced. And so one of the things was you did open up about your addiction. I don't want to mm -hmm. like get too deep into that, that yeah. portion. I just know that you've struggled with it. And I just want to ask, did cannabis help you come out of that? And what was it like? Cause you, we hear the thing, California sober, where mm -hmm. like a lot of people who go into recovery are not using any more drugs, but they're still smoking weed. Yeah. And it's like a lot of like back in the day it was like a lot of just like, Oh, you're going to smoke a cigarette and like rehab or something like that. 
I have faced addiction, unfortunately, too, as well. It's ended me up in the hospital and things like that. Yeah. So it's a really scary place to be. And I can honestly say, like, weed saved my life yeah. and helped me out of so many dark places. And so when you shared that, and I see that obviously you're still smoking weed, so yes. you're, you're California <laughs> sober. Um, I just wanted to see if that like really did help you come out of that, or you just like got help on your own, or did cannabis play any type of role with your like recovery process mm -hmm. so people can see it can also be beneficial for if you're coming off other drugs that obviously you know you don't want to be shooting up heroin every day yeah so um yeah I think it definitely helps with the withdrawal system or um symptoms I struggled with like um benzos so that withdrawal is very Oh, it's like some of the worst pain I've ever experienced in my life. And unfortunately, I've experienced it a couple times because I get sober and then go back and get sober. And um, it's so painful. Like I, you know, you have muscle spasms. My brain hurts. Like I, I can't eat, can't sleep, can't keep anything down. So I think that weed like helps with a lot of those symptoms and kind of like made it not as bad. And mm -hmm. I kind of... It's kind of like my crutch. Now I kind of was using pills as like there was a lot of depression and like things that were upsetting me. And at some points it felt very overwhelming that I wanted to just feel nothing. Yes. And unfortunately when I found like Xanax and stuff like that, it gave me that feeling of like just peace and like not feeling anything and just, but I was killing the part of myself that had life. Yeah. And it was very sad. Like I think a lot of people that were close to me were worried about me the and people taking advantage of you. Yeah. I mean, I had one person, I mean, he still to this day claims that he loves me, but I just, I feel like he took advantage of my, like, um, he was my drug dealer. So of course, you know, they, oh, they always they do that. I fell yeah. in love with my drug dealer. That's and what happened to me. I thought I did, that, but I told him, I was like, that's not love. Like, yep. that's really not, it was literally the drugs and it was embarrassing. Like I was posting him and saying, I loved him and all this stuff. And like, um, people thought that I genuinely was like dating him and stuff. And it really was just the drugs, unfortunately. It literally is the drugs because yeah. he's the one you're, you're getting it from. Yeah. So it's like the hand that feeds yeah. you. And he'd be like, oh, well, let me get one. You know, let me get high with you. Let me do this. So are you sure you don't want to double your order because they don't come around often? And next yep. thing I know, I'm like five grand. And he took like five grand from me in pills or I gave him the money for it. And then I got sober and I was like, yo, like, I don't want this anymore. Like, you don't understand. Like, I'm literally killing myself. And if you don't understand that and support me being sober, then you don't really love me. Yes. And, and if you're listening right now and you have someone that's, like, not worried about your sobriety and you're in the same state, then that's not someone who loves you Yeah, at all. I got sober for a good three months. I unfortunately relapsed after, but for the three months, it was when I was preaching online and, like, trying to help people see that, Everything you see online is not perfect. You think yes. I have a perfect life. I have a cool car. I have all these things, friends and money and stuff. But it's like everybody struggles. Everybody like, struggles. Everybody does. And that's why I think it's so important to be nice to people because you never know what someone's going through. Like, mm -hmm. don't slut shame people. Don't harass them. Don't do all this shit because everyone's hurting in their own way. And it's like I just wanted people to be able to relate that you're not you're as perfect human. as you see. Yeah. And yeah. I did relapse we're all human but yeah. I just feel like if if you it's about the difference between medicine and drugs is dosage yes these drugs that I was taking could help me with my anxiety and things that I'm very anxious about but it's when I start taking it every day and I mm -hmm. rely on it for oh this guy broke my heart so I'm gonna go take some you know pills like this shouldn't be like that yeah and so I kind of realize when I'm getting out of control and spiraling that that's kind of when it's yes. not medicine anymore. And I can't just tell people, oh, I have anxiety. It's like, no, bitch, yeah. you have like a drug problem. Yeah. <laughs> so I just try and like, I try and remember that I'm much better off without it. But it yes. is hard. It's hard. It's hard every day I think about it. And it's like, I wouldn't wish that upon anyone. 
because it is such a hard addiction. Yeah, exactly. So, I'm I'm so happy though that yeah. you're getting that's the thing is you're getting help, you want help. That's and yeah. I was the same way again. I, so I had a boyfriend as well. Similarly, I thought like I loved him and he was a drug dealer and same thing asked me like, "Oh, do you want more?" Like I never get yeah. these or I just got a big shipment. These are the best. And they're like tell and he would tell me like your friends don't love you. Like your life sucks. Like these are better. Like <laughs> I'm you, sorry, that's not funny. no. Literally, it's like the audacity of these people. The the the, the audacity men yeah. have. Oh. Period is like oh, good Lord. mind. Bl- I wish I could wake up and take like one eighth of the audacity they wake mm, up with. Like yep. damn. But They're like, bold. yeah, and really, especially when you're young, and mm-hmm. then not only the young, but you're on drugs, yeah. and you really do have mental health problems, and so all that escalated really quickly, and then you know, next thing you know, I'm about to lose my life, and yeah. and it was, and it was horrible, and I, I relapsed too, mm-hmm. and it's something every day, and especially on hard days where you have to like fight yourself and be like. I have to feel this Mm -hmm. and I have to get used to this. I can't, I can't escape, you know? But then when I discovered I didn't, I had literally basically done all these other drugs besides smoking weed. Um, No, like (laughs) literally like was like throwing back ecstasy, Mm -hmm. acid, fucking snorting Percocets, like everything. Mm -hmm. And then weed came along and I was like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> and like it changed everything. The anger that I was feeling, like you said, the calmness. And I think it really helped with the depression. And I think there's so much stigma and I, why I wanted to talk about plant versus pills because mm-hmm. pills, do, like you said, it, it could be medical, but it also could be like, you're just like abusing it and yeah. it comes in dosages and things yeah. like that. And so for example, like I take anti-anxiety and antidepressants right now, but I also smoke weed heavily. You have to know because not all antidepressants, not all anxiety medications go with weed. So being transparent with your doctor and having those conversations with your friends. I know I, for a long time, did not want to get on those medications. I'm weaning off antidepressants right now, but still, no matter what flow of life I'm in, weed was always there and was Mm -hmm. like, has always worked for me medicinally. And I just like, I I loved it. And Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I'm so glad that it's helping you and working wonders. And it, like you said, with the withdrawals, especially. Oh, yeah. So I'm really, I'm really happy for you. Yeah. And I, I want to thank you so much for being like super vulnerable with that. Of course, thank and you. I just, I want to end on a little lighter note, <laughs> yeah, okay. a little lighter note. <laughs> so before we take off, we're not going to read a thousand and one, but I did ask the stoned and horny people, if you could ask a porn star, a <laughs> real porn star, anything What would you ask? I'm so curious. So we have a few. I'm just going to read a few. And so our our first question is, this woman wants to know, how do you go so long? Like, so typically, (sighs) like, what would... Do do you like it? Or, like, can you talk to... Like, what is that like? I suck at cardio. I hate cardio. I smoke way too much weed that I take so many breaks. Like, I will ask for water after every position switch because... I just, I can't, I can't go the whole, it's like 30 minutes. That's what I was going to say. A standard one is about 30 minutes. So they need 30 minutes, but do you film longer than 30 minutes? Um, not really. Like, I mean, you film the intro and stuff like that, but as far as sex, it's like 25, 30 minutes and it always goes by so slow. Like I'll be on top and I swear to God, it's been seven minutes. Like it's normally seven minutes. Each position, each position is the rule, but I swear to God, I'll think it's seven minutes. And they're like, yeah, we got like 15 minutes left. And I'm like, Pfft. you're like, I'm going to oh, quake and die. Fuck, I'm going to die. So okay. I just, I ask for breaks and you can, you, we have safe words. Okay. So I'll just say cut or I'll just say, can I have some water please? And they just always, um, someone's standing cool. by helping. Yeah. There's always, okay. the crew is always cool with cutting, at least in my experience with browsers is who I shoot for. So, um, they always let me have some cold, cold water. Good. Yes. I like that. Yes. I love that they're taking care of you. I, in, in my personal life too, after I come, like I'm done. So I'll need a break and I have no problem telling the guy like, 
<laughs> pushing him off be like I need a second yeah so I think it's very important if you need a break say so and like and so when you actually like come on screen do you in like in real life you're just kind of like oh I need like a moment afterwards like you can't yeah. just keep going I mean I hate Does to it say it but I don't really ever actually come on screen okay and I don't I don't know some people do but in my experience I get very tired okay and like I, my vagina is just is like, no, like get out. Like it yeah, doesn't want it. It's a it. lot. Yeah. It's a lot of friction. So at, in my experience, like for filming, I try not to, but it always is kind of more performing and that's what people need to understand. It is a performance. Like it is not um, always going to be that intense, like chemistry for mainstream. We are always opening to camera, always worried about the camera. So it's kind of hard to get there. There's a lot of, it's like, a lot of angles, a yeah. lot of like, like, especially though we see those like Hollywood movie kisses. And usually when you hear the actors talking, they're like, that was like the most awkward kiss of my life. Yeah. Cause you're actually like kissing a cheek or above or something. Cause you're, it's trying to look on yeah. screen at it's yeah. So it's, it's a, a lot performance. of work. It's, it's entertainment for you guys. It's a movie. It's not real. Yes. Yes. Okay. Love that. <laughs> and then, so another one, what's your most unique talent or hobby? Hmm. I, I don't know. I guess I don't look like it, but I'm really good at math. Ooh. I'm very smart with numbers. Like I always, every check, I always make the tip, whatever is going to make it an even dollar. Like oh, I start I with that. the cents and I just like, I love that little math in my head. So I don't know. I'm, I'm always been very good with numbers. I thought I was going to be an accountant and then I realized that would bore me to death. <laughs> so I don't know. I feel like that's a nice little like thing that people don't expect from me, but yeah, I, I love don't know. That. As far as my talent, I mean, everyone sees my talents. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of talents. Okay. Yeah. And there, not only is your body a talent, but your brain is too. Thank you. We love that. <laughs> we love that. Were you getting A's in math in high school and stuff? Yes. Then? I was really good at math. I was in pre, I was in calculus. My Shut senior up. Year. Yeah. Wow. I was really good. If you weren't a porn star, do you think you'd be like an accountant or something? No, because that was, shit was so boring. I was like, I don't want to live a job with numbers and dealing with other people. I also kind of at some point wanted to be a troubled teens counselor. Oh, I love that. Yeah, but I realized later on, I don't want to deal with people and their problems and their yeah. numbers and their, their bank and all that stuff. So I'm just like... I I can't. That's I don't, good I don't know you, if I could work a job where you have to work with for other people. Yeah, with people. Customer service. Customer it's service. The hardest fucking job yes. to have. I can't. It's hard. Yes. It's hard. I don't. I don't blame you. Yes. Uh, another question. What is the pay down or is the pay breakdown adequate for who does what in a scene versus the overall earnings of the brand? Uh no. That's been a thing for a long time. These companies always make tons of money. Obviously, the very successful ones off of us, and we get paid one time. A flat fee. Yes. Each person has their own rate. It's based on your credibility in the industry, how you know professional you are and everything. And um, you obviously have a different rate for anal and DP and stuff like that. But as far as uh, boy girls or boy boy girls as long as there's no anal involved or group scenes it's all the same girl girl is less which is honestly more work like there's less things literally you can do. like a boy girl is so much easier of a day but a girl girl sometimes could take forever but you get paid less because you know there's no penetration normally or like it's just not the same but it doesn't matter what you do throughout the scene you're always going to get paid the same do you, know? you get like paid like since you specifically work with like a company do they pay you like a flat fee to be on your ro the roster or mm. do you just get like paid per video you do with them um every company is different but the way that it should go is per scene okay yes i get paid per scene love that and there's no amount of scenes that i have to do or i'm expected to do it's just whatever i love that yeah they're Good great for you Make your schedule great. we love them Bra <laughs> yes. am i saying it browsers, browsers yes yeah I, love them. I think a lot of us are familiar with browsers yes. <laughs> and, and familiar with you <laughs> um okay we'll read one more have you ever done a shitty porno and if so what's it called and what was the script about yeah there's one my friends make fun of me for it. i 
I love Charles Dara, first off. Okay. He's a great person. Love okay. him. But he does, um, his Carl Tough Love, it's his alter ego, is kind of more of a wacky type of website, kind of more crazy stuff. And okay. um, I thought we were going to do a scene where, you know, I was his college girlfriend or something, bringing home to meet the parents and fuck around the house. But the extra didn't come. So he was like, I have this adult baby costume, which is like... Not anything where it's like realistic. It's the stupid big. No, I thing. know. Like it looks like the little clams on um, what's it called? Alice in Wonderland that the guy eats. They have the little baby bibs and oh stuff. My, yeah. It literally was like that in a giant diaper, and and he's like, you know, because titties like milk and stuff. And yeah. I'm like, it's all right, fine. But we made it very clear I wasn't his mom. I'm not into the incest step or whatever. I I don't find that appropriate. So I made it very clear I'm not his mom. But I'll watch over him. And yeah, it was just a really embarrassing okay. thing that I'm like embarrassed about. But I feel like everyone has that. And if that's my one thing that's like in the everyone industry that's one. bad, then to me, then it's fine. And then the only other one is I was eating some guy's ass and he said, yeah, tickle me Elmo. And I will never live that one down either. I've, to, I've laughed about this no. with my friends and they love, they love these, like these two Why? things. Yeah. Yeah, he's I don't like, know. Tickle me, Elmo. Love, you, love him too. Another great person, but they're just funny. And is that the? I I, I kind of love the tickle me Elmo one. Can yeah. you find that? Is that out there? Yeah, yeah. Did you it laugh when you were in his yeah. ass? I I pulled away and I was laughing and I was like, I'm sorry. I need a, <laughs> a second to gather myself. But um, yeah, it was with Rome Major, so it's all it's all my only fans. It's, it's on his. And okay. Yeah, it's just love they're that. out there. <laughs> well, and with that said, can you tell everybody before we wrap up where they can find you? Plug yes. anything and everything we want to know. Okay. All Kendra. Um, my Instagram currently is the real KS Library Girl. My Twitter is just KS Library Girl. OnlyFans is KS Library Girl. My TikTok is Bendra Sunderland, which was a second account I had to made, so I put my my alter ego drunk. You might have met Oh, I, I've Bendra. met Bendra a couple of times. I think the She's first crazy. time I ever met you, I met Bendra. Oh, God. Yeah. It was great. Poor thing. Yeah. It was, no, it was beautiful. And you yeah. had lots of sunscreen and you kept us oh, all yes. sunscreened up. And it was yes. great. If Kendra, anything, thank you to Bendra for yeah. keeping me unsunburned. Well, it's Kendra like that. that keeps Bendra prepared. Oh, she, okay. Ahead of time, I'll know when she's going to come out. And it's it's my drunk alter ego. She's very wild and will shotgun like 10 white claws. Oh, you're row. the queen of shotgunning white claws. Uh, sh I won't sip them. I will only shotgun them. I don't know how you do it. I, I don't, don't know. know. It's just so much easier just to throw it all back in your throat. I don't know. I it, don't know, baby. <laughs> it's just me. Like, yeah, no, I love yeah. it. I lo no, people can do it. Definitely. It's not just you. I've seen people, they're shotgunning all over the oh, world. Oh, yeah. Some people are so much faster, but no, yeah. you, you've got it. Yeah. That was my OnlyFans. Yeah, OnlyFans, TikTok. Um, my website is KendraSunderlandVIP.com. I sell like used clothing, scenes, merchandise, and um, my calendar that I do every year is coming up. I have a fleshlight. You can search me on fleshlight.com and watch me on browsers. Yes. yes. And I'm not going to spoil <laughs> it for anybody, but Kendra told me a little bit about her calendar and it's going to be fucking yes. amazing. Oh, thank so you. if you need a 2023 calendar, you better hit these sites and yes. pick one up because I'm sure they're <laughs> going to go fast and the ideas are fire. Thank you. So on that note, that thank concludes you. today's episode of Stoned and Horny. Thank you so much for listening. Remember, if you want a chance to join the conversation, to follow us on Instagram at Stoned and Horny Podcast and leave a comment. Don't forget to follow us on all... all Blah, blah. Don't forget to follow us on all our socials to stay updated with stoned and horny news. My name's Haley Herms. Thank you so much, Kendra, for Thank being you here. Thank you for having me. And I'll see you guys on next week's episode.